Hey, hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of the British Canoeing Paddlecast. It's lovely to have you all here. Welcome, and thank you so much for giving up a bit of your time to be here with us all here tonight. So, yeah, my name's Etienne Stott. I'm an Olympic champion, a rebel, and a paddler in my heart. I uh, just love canoeing, and I hope to get to carry on for as long as I can. Um, I'm just wondering if any of you have managed to get out paddling this last week, I see the course in Nottingham has reopened and hopefully it's getting a bit easier for all of you to get out on the water and uh, hopefully some of this beautiful blue sky weather that I've seen outside has uh, been tempting you out onto the water. So, yeah, good for you. So last week, yeah, we had a really great catch up with Ailey Gibson and Adia Misra. It was really nice to chat with them. We were talking really about increasing the participation of women and girls in our great sport. We heard about the She Paddles Project. Uh, Adia is a, a club champion for the She Paddles Project. And Ailey Gibson, the founder of Slalom Inspires and Project Flow. It's just super interesting to kind of think about how our community can welcome more women and girls into our sport and support those projects. So if you missed it, check it out on our Listen Again on your favorite podcast provider or via the Paddlers portal on British Canoes website. It's all out there. And if you are watching tonight or watch again or listen again, thank you so much for coming in and uh, checking out that way it's really nice for you if you leave a comment or subscribe it helps a lot just get our name out there get this podcast out there so people can get involved so today yeah we've got a super interesting episode three incredible paddlers who have been recognized by the paddling community for having a positive contribution to supporting people's mental health and well-being so a really warm welcome to Lynn Marie Dale, uh, sorry, Lynn Dale, a paddle sport officer for Black Dog Outdoors, Sarah Coombs, founder of Blue Therapy Active, and Darren Johnson, founder of Three Peers Water Sports. So uh, lovely to see you all here. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm super Hi. grateful for you taking your time here. So yeah, look, um, I'm just going to kind of go a little bit and, and, and get to know you all a little bit and introduce you all to our guests and uh, just sort of so we can we can get to know you. So I'm just going to come to Lynn first, if it's all right. Um, sure. This name, Black Dog Outdoors, that's kind of interesting. And I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about it, um, the work it does to improve people's mental health and well-being and how you got involved with it. So that would be really interesting. Absolutely. So Black Dog Outdoors was founded by our director, Andy Higson, uh, about four or five years ago, I believe now. Uh, we're a registered charity. We're national, so we cover absolutely the whole of the UK. And we do all outdoor activities, supported outdoor activities. So all of us as volunteers are qualified instructors in our own right, but we're also mental health first aiders. And our passion is to encourage people and support people to get outside and to really achieve something and absorb the the therapy that there is out there um, that the natural elements has to offer. And for me, it's all about being on the water. So when I joined Black Dog Outdoors a couple of years ago, they just registered as a charity and we were really keen to get people on the water. And that's been my focus for the last 18 months or so. And we've had such a fantastic response, not just from the attendees, but from the paddling community in, in general and from British Canoon, it's been amazing. I also see that you're a mental health first aider, and that's a qualification I did. I don't know if mine has lapsed. I'll have to try and find out. <gasps> about that. Can Get you tell it, people Jake. a little bit about what mental health first aid is? Because that's a really, I mean, I think that's a really important thing. Yeah, I, I'm really glad you put some nuts. I think it's something that for me that all sports coaches should have. We all deal with first aid and we all have to go through first aid qualifications, but mental health first aid is completely separate. And if you're out on a paddle with someone and you're across a lake or you're down a river or you're out in the ocean, and if you have somebody who then experiences or shows anxiety, um, they have um, PTSD, they are struggling with depression, you mm. need to be able to know how to deal with that. And what we're saying is we're not there to fix someone's problem, but what we are there to do is to support them. So to see, say, signpost, I think, is the most important thing I would encourage all coaches to consider and all clubs to consider too. If you see something or if you become aware of something, then support that person and encourage them to reach out to where they can get some help. And as I say, I think the, the mental health first aid courses that are available 
are really good and very positive and we've had some fantastic responses from those that have done them. Yeah, I second that. I remember the course I did was really, it was really good because I think people are scared about mental health issues. Just, I, I've literally finished a first aid, a physical first aid, and it is a bit scary, but it's even yeah. scarier to be confronted by something like that. You have no idea what to do, and it kind of helps really set the boundaries and helps you to understand what you can get involved in, doesn't it? It, it really does. It helps you to just see the signals and to be able to deal with it. And for us as coaches, it gives us the confidence to know that when we're out there, if, if the situation does occur, we have the skills to be able to deal with it. The other thing we'd encourage is for people to take the Suicide Prevention Alliance training that we, you can all access and it's free online. We work positively with the Suicide Prevention Association and the National Suicide Prevention Association to destigmatize suicide and to help people get the training that they need in order to be aware of any of that. And it's something certainly post COVID that's hugely on the increase. And we're, I think we're all very aware of the suicide rates being far too high. Mm -hmm. One death from suicide is, is one too many. So again, there's training opportunities out there for all paddlers, coaches, people in society. If the training's available, then really it, it's going to give you more confidence when you're out on the water. Yeah, no, thank you, Lynn. And it's really interesting you say to kind of contextualise it right now, you know, we're coming out of very, very dark times for people and it's going to be some tough times ahead. So that's really nice, to, nice to think about that. So thank you. So come to you now, Darren, if that's all right. I just thought I'd ask you a couple of questions as well. So, um, well, I was just finding out. So Filed Coast Stand Up Paddleboarding Group uh, is something you're involved in. And I'm wondering what your connection to that is and, and and what how you feel it has helped improve people's mental health and, and well-being um I, I think recently it's I mean, we started out the group just as a couple of us wanting to get some extra people on the water to paddle with and then it just snowballed from there when we took it on there was like 26 members and now we've got 458 um wow. and you can you can just see when people come out on the water you can just see the, the moods lift they're, they're, they're chatty if they've had a stressful day at work they can just come out and just totally de-stress and it, it's made a massive difference especially over the last 12 months and mm. and that's a remarkable leap uh, in membership and and just say it again when when did that leap happen is that just been a steady uptick or has that happened like uh, over we, the last year especially we took over uh, there's myself david davis and colette fallon we took it over and started to run it with Simon Bennett at about middle of 2019. So eight, 18 months or so, and we've... Uh, wow, it's exploded. It's, it's really taken off, yeah. Incredible. Well, no, that's really cool. And I suppose the, you know, do you, do you feel like the activities you're doing, the connection, just helping people through these through these tough times and through just life life in general tough times? Do you, do you notice that? I think I think a lot of people wanted something to do and then all, all we started doing was just going down to the local lake regularly and then people just came we didn't we didn't we didn't really plug it that much people just saw us there and wanted to be involved and it just it just snowballed from there and people were going away in the next next week they're coming back and they're bringing more friends with them and before you knew it it's it's just grown into what it is now and how did this lead up to, how did this contribute to setting up three peers uh, uh, water sports? Because it sounds like these things, well, I don't know, it just sounds remarkable that how this is how this has taken off. Well, when, like I say, when we started out to do it, we, we we were struggling to get into the sport ourselves because there was nowhere locally you could do it. You couldn't go and demo any boards. You couldn't go and try anything. You always had to go out of town to do it. So... When people were saying to us, oh, where can we go and try things? It was like, oh, the Lake District, well, that's, that's no good, is it? When, mm. you know, some people don't drive and people can't get around. So that's why we set it up. We can we can do the demo days and and we can bring it bring it to people rather than them having to try and find it. Oh, we've already got one comment here. Lorraine Harworth is saying, everyone is so friendly, no pressure to go, turn up when you can. So there you go, you've already got like a fan there. So thank you very much for watching, Lorraine. And it seems- Cheers, like Lorraine. <laughs> ah, well, good stuff. 
So, Sarah, if it's all right, I'll ask you a couple of questions now as well, because uh, it's really, again, really nice to have you on the show. So you're in, well, you're the founder, as I understand it, of Blue Therapy Group. And I thought it'd be really interesting to kind of hear about how you set that up and, and how or what your involvement in it is, I suppose, and, and how you feel that's contributed to people's mental health and well-being. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been teaching paddleboarding probably about or five years, maybe six years. And um, so I've always been on the water teaching people. And we had a group for people to come out paddleboarding with us, you know, so we can um, actually get out and enjoy the water. But due to uh, lockdown last year, our numbers just grew drastically and people were just coming out with us we was advertising on facebook when we could when restrictions wasn't too bad um when we can go out as groups of 30 that we were going out for a paddle here and people were coming out to join us so it was um very nice and we've we've expanded drastically just from myself teaching paddleboarding i mean it was my partner dell as well we both co-founded it okay. and we've evolved from just paddleboarding now, where we have uh, kayaks, canoes come out with us. We do walking by the uh, water's edge. We do cycling as well. So it's evolved everything. <laughs> so I was just uh, noticing, I've just been, uh, before the show I came on, I had a look a little bit about your profile. And it mm. says you've been attacked by a crab. Um, yeah. And I thought that's obviously a noteworthy thing because it's out there on the internet, therefore <laughs> it must be a fact and must be true. I'm kind of wondering, you know, how grievous this, this crab attack was. It was huge. <laughs> it wasn't that big. Uh, people that know me quite well, they know I, I actually have a thing about seaweed and about crabs. And uh, we had been out paddleboarding. We was on a slipway at the sea and a crab literally bit my little toe. And it was quite hilarious because I did a almost a cartoon of jumping up and getting out of the water and everybody was wondering where's she going what's going on but um yeah i got attacked by a crab <laughs> okay well you know i'm glad you survived and it's all it's okay and hopefully it doesn't happen again <laughs> but i guess in your line of work you know we can never tell but no thank you and, and it'd be really interesting so i'm just um we've talked quite a bit over the well several paddle cast uh, episodes um about how um, something about paddle sports is special and is good for people. I do truly believe it. there is something special. I know all sports yeah. will have their passionate people, um, and I'm absolutely sure there'll be people saying, you know, but I, I do think paddle sports is special. And I just wondered, would you mind sort of sharing, you know, what you think is so good about paddle sports? And I'll, I'll go just, uh, Lynn, I'll go for you first of all. And just, I knew you were going to go for me first Yeah, again. well, you know, I'm just <laughs> not very imaginative. We'll just go round and round in circles. <laughs> That's my life, actually, slalom. <laughs> there you go. Um, for me, it's it's just the water itself. It doesn't matter what discipline you're in, whether you're a gold medalist, whether you're a social paddler. It's that connection you get with the water. We all know how much all paddlers miss being on the water over the last 12 months. And if you were to ask any of the sea kayakers or any of the slalom canoeists, it was just being on the water. If we sit and just put our paddles in, when we do all our coaching training, we think about boat body blade, we're thinking of the connection with the equipment that we're using. But what we don't necessarily think about is when we're dipping that paddle in the water, we're connecting with a natural element by watching the water swirling and watching the water drips. So whether it's shooting the, the, the rivers, the grade fives, or whether it's a nice leisurely paddle on a sup board, you're outside and you're with something around you and you're floating and there's just nothing better than just absorbing that natural environment. There's something very, just very positive about it. And we see the results so often. We really do. And what about you, Darren? How do you, do you, do you kind of watch the thing that, you know, the specialness of, of paddle sports, of water or that environment. Do you Can you put your finger on it? I mean, it could be a tricky question. No, it's, it's exactly like Lynn says. It's just just being out there. It's, as soon as you go out there, if I've had a, a bad day in the day job and I'll, I might go into the office and my wife would be like, just go paddling because she knows 
that that that'll sort me out. You know, it's it just it clears your head. Um, it's yeah, you just can't be being out on the water. It's just so relaxing. I love it. And what what's your day job, if you mind me asking, Darren? Um, I own a fire alarm business, so it ah. can be quite stressful sometimes. So you're a busy person then, because you've got a, quite a few things going on. So yeah, fire alarms, yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so and 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 you doing, um, Darren? You're paddling mostly on the sea, I'm assuming. No, Is most no, most on the lake, lakes and canals. We go on the sea sometimes, but mo mostly yeah, the local lakes and canals, and or up to the Lake District when we're not restri restricted on our movements. Do you prefer like canals or lakes uh, if you had to kind of choose? Uh, because I'm interested, sometimes I think that lakes, you have this sense of, of space over canals because you're a bit narrower, you get a sense of kind of movement and going places. You know, I, I think both are quite nice. I, I quite like the canals on the fact that you can spot some great critters when you're going down the canals. I've seen all sorts of critters knocking about. Um, but again, the lakes, when you see like deers coming down to the side of the lake and you're just drifting past and they don't even pay any attention to you. It's, mm. I, I, I'm not, as long as it's water, I don't care which bit of water I'm on, to be fair. <laughs> I'm not bothered. Oh, that's cool. No, I'm I'm kind of the same. I've got to be honest, especially nowadays, I really appreciate whatever whatever I can get, and maybe that's the case for other people as well. So, Sarah, what about you? Um, what's your kind of – what's the thing that kind of really makes you feel good about paddling? Well, it's, it's very similar to what Lynn and Darren both said. It's, it is that – escape as soon as you go out that water you just instantly feel at peace and at ease you know that it's like everything that's just draining out of your body that was weighing you down and you just <laughs> sorry that's my dog <laughs> we, okay we'll come back which one's that i know there's archie and wilson and I'm kind that's of archie <laughs> okay and just for everyone this is kind of amusing to me perhaps it's just me there is actually a black dog in the show and this is this dog is called archie sarah's dog yeah. so we might see a black dog on the show today hey anyway <laughs> let's move on before he starts barking some more so oh we've got a yeah here lee hetherington saying it's the freedom and get away from life and i suppose it's interesting as well because during the lockdown and i suppose perhaps even going forwards out of this um you know we're gonna have you know people's lives will have changed you know something will have happened in this last year to people and you know perhaps yeah for the worst so some people will be getting you know have to recover and all that there will be that recovery but i suppose i'm wondering what you think will have been perhaps the benefits for people in this last year perhaps if they've got to go out i don't know if anyone's got a response on, on I think, that because I, th I think go on Darren. i think a lot of people will actually appreciate the outdoors more because because they've been locked down more i think when now they get out i think they'll actually appreciate it more um i know yeah. obviously when people have like the the hour they could go out and do their exercise. I've never seen so many people out walking, riding bikes, whatever, but actually getting out where normally they probably wouldn't do. Um, I think it's made a massive difference and hopefully it'll continue after the lockdowns. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of these things will, will stay, won't they? And they'll be kind of sticky. I'm, I'm thinking, um, Lynn, I'm wondering for you, um, what's your plans or what are the plans of, of black dog outdoors as, as you know, we move out into this kind of slightly, well, new era, do you think, are you anticipating a kind of change in what you're doing or, or what's going to happen? You know, what's, we've, yeah. How do you think it's going to work? We've seen huge demand and, and tomorrow is our first post COVID paddle sport event. So tomorrow morning we're taking our first group of attendees out for a canoe trip, which we're really excited about. Um, so huge increase in the workload and a positive increase in social prescriptions, which is something that I know that we've been speaking with British Canoeing about in, in encouraging clubs to be involved in as well. So with the growth of social prescriptions alongside all those existing people that want to get outside, there's a phenomenal response. But the difficulty with, not a difficulty, but one of the things we have to be aware of is that, as Darren said, people have been perhaps shielding for the best part of 12 months not exercising as much as they were. So we're seeing a difference in how fit and active people are now in opposed to a year ago. And also the social interactions have become a little more difficult for people. Um, I know for people to actually sometimes just getting out of the door, they know what they want to do it, but just getting out of the door can be really difficult. And we see that quite a lot. Um, and I know that I have one person in particular that I'm hoping is watching this evening. 
because I know that that person is finding it difficult to get out of the door and come on come on the canoe trip tomorrow. And I've sort of said, you know, watch this this evening because then you'll see me, you'll hear my voice. So then when you come tomorrow, you know someone already. You're not mm -hmm. meeting strangers, you'll know me. So it's encouraging people to just take that one step because we know that, as everyone has said, once we get them out there and on the water, it works. The rest of it, the water does the work for us. It's mm. just about us encouraging people out. Oh, that's, I'm filled in my heart now. I'd just like to, to speak to that person as well and say, um, I hope you do find uh, that courage. And I believe you have it already inside you, because I believe all people have this. And I, I, I don't know what the forecast is like, but I believe it will be a nice day where I am. And I think it'll be a nice day in a lot of places. It's, I think it's it'll be, be a beautiful, beautiful day for going to yeah. in a paddle sport, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, whatever. So, uh, yeah, I hope you find it in there. And and, and Sarah, I saw you sh uh, nodding along to that and it sounded it seemed like you kind of identified with that, what, what Lynn was saying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people out there who do struggle to get out the front door. I mean, even we do. You know, when you're feeling down and everything, you think, oh, can I, do I? And you just need to actually get yourself out the door. And once you're out the door, it's a whole new world. It's, you come back with a different mindset. It's so much nicer. It's just taking that step. And Sarah, what's your favorite kind of um, thing? What would you do in paddling if you could just get to do it all, all day? If you had nothing else to do, what would you do? What would be the thing that you would do every day if you could? Ah, oh, see, my favorite is I actually paddle on the sea. Oh. And my favorite thing is there's a boy uh, by the boats where you can just attach to with a throw line and just lay on my board. So you're away, not too far from shore, so you're not in danger, but you're safely secured and just lay down on your board. And all you can hear is the seagulls. You can smell the sea air and you can just hear the water lapping. I could actually lay there all day. But unfortunately, the tide does go out here, so I would be on the mud. So, uh, <laughs> but it's yeah, that that's my little piece of heaven. Yeah, sort of peace and yeah, tranquility yeah. there. I'm just I just noticed Kimberly Woods, our Tokyo uh, slalom representative, is watching and has said, loving this little hand clap for you guys. So yeah, well done. Thank you for doing that. There's some really interesting comments. Some quite some quite longer comments here. Chris Appleby, I used to struggle massively with my mental health. And I got the courage to join a club and now heading down the leader, then coaching route, an amazing help for my mental health. And I think, you know, so many, it's lovely to read that, Chris, and good luck with your journey and keep keep going. So I think this interesting thing is that I personally think that paddle sports is just a really great leveler. Everybody is kind of rubbish at it. Yeah. Everyone is a bit wobbly and, and starts and falls in. And, and then you kind of, it builds you up. Na you know, you kind of naturally build yourself up, I suppose. And, and with the support of people around you, it's actually quite, um, I think it, yeah, to me, it seems very empowering, nice thing. So I'm uh, just going to bring this question in from Christian Zik. Uh, it's, I think, I hope I've said your name right there, Christian. It says, what do you think about inflatable kayaks? Has anyone got an opinion on that? Hi. Go on, go on, Darren. Um, that was the first thing I had to get me on the water when I first got into it. Um, we'd I'd seen somebody doing kayaking, I thought, oh, quite fancy a bash at that. And that was, that was the first thing I could afford to get me in the water, which we just used on the local canals. It wasn't long before I moved to a hard one because, um, uh, yeah, it just wasn't fast enough. But, um, yeah, it, it got us started. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah. thing, isn't it? Like the accessibility of, of, of inflatable, like, you know, I guess stand-up paddle boards now, you know, really interestingly, they just can roll up and people can get on. I guess inflatable kayaks look a bit bulkier to me, but... They are a good way. I suppose we've just got to be careful. I think they do catch the wind a bit, but people are yeah. cool. you got to be careful where, where you use them. I mean, we only you, we didn't take ours in the sea because of the risk of, of of it being inflatable, but down down the canal and somewhere like that just to get a feel for it and on on like the local lakes and that yeah. it was fine. I so Lynn, I saw have their place. Sorry, yeah. I think I, I think they have their place. As Darren said, it, it's the initial getting out bit for people and it makes it accessible for people and often as a family you'll find a family that will, that will buy an inflatable and it's their first steps as you say to getting outside and I think um, some people can be quite critical and just think oh it's just an inflatable but as a coach for me I mean I coach all the time anyway that's my job and I'm always more than happy to give coaching sessions to families who've bought inflatables 
to give them water awareness, safety awareness, you know, how you get back on, what what to carry with you. So absolutely, I think they all have their place in helping people get outside. Yeah, no, so thank you. No, that's really interesting. I just want to welcome everybody to the British Canoe and Paddlecast. If you've just joined us, we've got some really lovely guests. Our kind of focus tonight is on on mental health and paddle sports and how those seem to kind of be like peas and carrots, as Forrest Gump would say. And I think that um, it's really nice as well. If anyone's listening again, thank you for listening again and being tuning in for that way. It's really cool and just super grateful to have everybody watching and, and hopefully enjoying and, and getting something out of this. So there's lots and lots of interesting comments. Uh, there's some really interesting, um, here, we go, here we go. This is a nice one. I spotted this. Alison Wilcox. <clears throat> I know from my experiences that when I was recovering from cancer, I went swimming at my local outdoor pool. It reminded me of my love for water. And that got her into sea kayaking four years on. And I've never looked back. And this is something I'm interested in is about getting out on the sea. I believe the sea is a very you know, wide open spaces. And I think that, Sarah, do you often do you ever think you just want to like head off and keep going? Or is it do you like to keep keep an eye on the on the shoreline? Oh, I would like to keep going, but you've got to get back again. <laughs> it's like, no, not going too far. But I just wanted to say, that's where we got our name from, of Blue Therapy, is from that sensation you get out on the water. So when you, you know that, what we was discussing earlier, of that sense of peace and a great mindset, but being out on the sea as well, that is where Blue Therapy come from. That's what we've named it. And just just while we're saying there, so, you know, you very much kind of position yourself there as, a, you know, this is a very much a mental health and a, a, an outdoors activity. And that must be very conscious. You must feel very strongly uh, to, to make that so clear in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's just strange how um, you get this connection with people where you, you know you can sense when somebody isn't feeling quite themselves and you're out on the water you're just having a paddle and all of a sudden people start talking to you telling them they all their woes mm. and yeah it's yeah it's bizarre because <laughs> i think it's interesting as well isn't it because again when you're in the you're slightly vulnerable i guess sometimes when you're learning and very often creates an, an interesting relationship because you're putting your trust in that coach or those people around you and that creates a nice relationship and, and very often you end up exploring things that you never really thought you know you just end up talking like say that's really cool yeah there's relationship advice that i normally end up get getting <laughs> asked <laughs> i don't know why but that seems to be the hot topic of what people are struggling with at the well, moment <laughs> human relationships are probably one of the most important things right i mean what what is some, some you know what do humans do apart from you know speak to each other and have relationships with each other i suppose that's a, a, an interesting yeah. thing so i'm interested as well because you know I, I've heard that, you know, there's a large increase, you know, on the coastline of, of increase in incidents that required Coast Guard teams to get involved. And I'm wondering if you heard about that and what your thoughts on that, because I guess that must have been extra strain when there's people, you know, just everywhere doing stuff, you know, on those, I guess, on those rare days when we got out and they were sunny and we saw pictures. It must have been kind of intense. Do you, do you have a connection to that sort of area? Uh, unfortunately, I do because I'm station officer at South End Coast Guard. Ah, okay, so, that's uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I do have a bit of a connection. But thankfully, I mean, at South End, the guys that paddleboard on the sea are quite good. It's just the winds changing or just that little bit of lack of knowledge. But there has been a huge increase of people being rescued purely because people want that escape. They've gone and bought a board, they've gone out on the sea don't quite know how to tell the tides or the winds and get caught out. So, yeah, there has been a, a, a large increase. Of, uh, so, Sarah, increases. how much do you do that? Is that, some, that's a, I guess, a voluntary thing on the side or is that part of your job or how do you are the, the officer, the Coast Guard officer? Uh, um, it's voluntary. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I volunteer. So you take shifts in that and so I guess sometimes it's a miserable day you think oh i'm not going to be very busy today but it must be some days when this like the forecast is good and you know it's going to be an interesting day is that, is that how it works well yeah it's <laughs> i mean i work full time um so as soon as i finish work if i'm not out paddleboarding then i'm booked on as part of the coast guard and if i'm not paddle if i'm not on the water i'm near the water <laughs> as a coast guard or paddleboarding 
Yeah, so it's no no messing around for you. You're on the water or near the water, and yeah, that sounds yeah. It sounds cool as well. It sounds interesting. Um, so I was just going to come back to you, uh, Darren. You know, I heard that you are, you know, paddling, uh, stand up paddleboarding with your daughter, and we were talking about like relationships and how kind of this is must be a lovely thing to share. Um, and what so what's been the impact on yeah. you with being able to share this kind of hobby I, I sometimes i like calling it a hobby but you know this activity yeah. um, um it's, it's been great really because from the first day I, I tried it my daughter was the one that was with me when we hired um the first time we hired a sit on top kayak up in the lake district and since then she's done it all the time with me when we when we moved from kayaks onto paddle boards um i bought one board impulsely bought the wrong board for myself it was more of a submersible when we stood on it. Um, so she gained a board, I had to buy another board. So straight away we ended up with two. Um, so we've just always done it together and it's it's just great. It's you know, it's just something we can do together. We both love it. Um, she's more into the racing and going faster. I'm more of a cruise with spot the wildlife. Um but did yeah, you she start cruising and spotting wildlife because your daughter was super quick on a stand-up paddleboard, or did that, <laughs> that way? Oh, I'm not. I've, I've no intention of trying to keep up with her. Not a sniff. I'm, I'm not built, built. Not built for speed, me. <laughs> you're just a cruiser. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. So, is your daughter considering, you know, competing? Because I noticed there's, you know, stand-up paddleboarding and Olympic program, and there's all sorts of world championships uh, stuff going on. Do you think she's going to go down that road? She's wanting to try and get into some races this this year when they all start happening again. So hopefully, fingers crossed, she'll we'll get to get to participate. She was wanting to do it last year, but obviously everything got cancelled. So hopefully, she'll get get a bash this year. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's been tough out there for anybody who wanted to do anything last year, and yeah, my heart goes out to people who wanted to do competitions. Um, I'm sure it must have been really, really hard. Um, and so I just have a, a little question for for Lynn as well. I mean, do you have any tips for anyone looking to get involved with supporting and improving people's mental health um, through paddle sport? Because we've already talked a little bit about you know the the mental health first aid and the suicide prevention training that you're talking about. Is there anything else that you think is really you know useful to help people get involved and who might be feeling, you know, I'm interested in paddle sports. I'm interested in, you know, mental health just because I think canoeing community is a lovely bunch of wonderful caring people. And it, these things kind of just, again, I just think they, they, they fit together really well. They do fit perfectly. Um, I think obviously get in touch with us. We're more than happy to help support people getting outside. And, and again, we're more than happy to help signpost people and encourage them to join their local clubs. Um, we're also there to help those local clubs in getting the training that they may need and to give them information so that when those new people come through the door, they know how to help them and support them. So we have a great club community. We have a great social community, as you say, paddling the paddling community in general are so friendly and so supportive. If it's something that you want to try and you don't know where to go to, then look on the British Canoeing website, get in touch with us, and we'll make sure that we direct you in the right way or get you out on one of our paddle sport events too. But there has to be an opportunity for everyone out there. And I think it's our role to really support them in making sure that they can get through the door and just take that initial first step because we know ourselves that once we take that, in that, that initial first step, they're going to be fine. Mm. And Lynn, I'm just wondering as well, I mean, you sound like you're being involved in, in paddling. Do you, you know, you do stand up paddle boarding, canoeing, kayak. I don't know which one of those you do. Do you have a preference? Which do you like the most? Is that too hard a question? It's too hard a question. I'm a paddle sport coach for a living anyway, so I don't care. You can float me on a pond and I'll be fine. I yeah. honestly don't mind. I love sea kayaking. I run Yorkshire Sea Kayakers as well, so I love hitting the coast. And I, I coach a lot on the canal, so I've been on the canal today. The benefits for me with the canal, canal, and I know Darren mentioned it earlier, is it allows us to deliver sessions straight to the heart of the busy community, straight to a city where perhaps people don't have the opportunity to get to a river, maybe don't drive, as Darren mentioned. And if you take people out on the canal, you see so many friendly faces walking past or cycling past on the towpath. It's such a lovely environment to be in. So there's opportunities there for everyone. As, as a country, we're an island surrounded by water. We are laced with rivers, lakes and canals all over. 
So there are plenty of locations and plenty of opportunities. We just need to make that little bridge for people to get across to mm. help them take that first step. And that's kind of one of the reasons why this paddle sport, this this paddle cast got going was because to get people, give people more access. So yeah, this is a nice comment from Anna Stishova. It says, I got into canoeing when I got into hard times. It really helped me to recover and reconnect with people to get a good hobby and to progress in it and also in other areas of my life. And having great people in the club to talk really helped. So I think there's just uh, that, you know, sense of community. And I think the interesting thing about paddling is it's, uh, well, hold on, here's Curran Johnston. We're so lucky in this country with a variety of land and coastal waters. It's indeed, you know, we're not too far from the sea ever, really. And, and I think that's a nice a nice part of it. And and also you know, rivers and, and, and lakes and everything. We are laced with them and canals, especially in those urban environments. It's really interesting because yeah. I think, you know, I don't know what it's like where, where you live, um, but in Nottingham, we have like a canal that does run. They tend to run through right through cities and they are like little, you know, I, I kind of think they're like, you know, you have the little holes in the fences for hedgehogs to run through and they can kind of get around. And I sort of think canals are like that because, you know, you, there's yeah. all sorts of people going along there, people living along them, but also, you know, biking and running and just going out for walks. And I can imagine all these people kind of getting on because they're all connected by this kind of little, this little, little road this little path so um oh there's so many nice comments denise pentland saying paddling is a brilliant way to reconnect with the environment however i think a massive stress for people is access and that's absolutely one of the things we're looking to solve here i don't know uh, darren or, or sarah have you ever had any problems with access yourselves or does it, does it, does it struggle for you darren um the main issue we had at first was finding people to go out paddling with um the biggest the best thing we did was we joined uh, Ribble Canoe Club. Um, we, we met oh, loads of people that, for, for kayaking, canoeing, everything. Um, and then from there, it's, it's, like I say, that that helped us get everything else going across across the whole of the area. But that, that was our biggest thing when we, we, joined, we joined Ribble Canoe Club. Um, and the amount of people that we met, all like-minded, that just want to be out on the water, um, fantastic. To join the club, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I reckon that's a good shout. For, certainly for me, it's uh, you know that's the interesting thing about paddle sports. They're often kind of solo activities or maybe a two person, but they're also, I don't know, just just much for more better for safety, of course, with with other people. Yeah. But I think you just get to see and, and and experience things, and it's more just more social. Sarah, what about you? Because I guess access, you know, to the sea is not such a big deal. What is that? We we were we've had surfers against sewage and the kind of issues around pollution and stuff like that. Is that ever something that's ever crossed into your world or do you kind of not 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 worried about it? Oh no, yeah, but um access to the sea is not really an issue because I live just around the corner from the sea, so I'm quite lucky in that aspect. Um but with surfers against sewage and pollution in the sea, we do actually hold a lot of cleanups. Uh, on our beach so whenever we do a social paddle everybody cleans up they do they grab whatever they can even when I'm out teaching I normally say to people oh, can you just get that out and can you just grab that and <laughs> it's pretty much every time we're out on the water we do bring stuff back but it's quite nice because Southend is quite aware of um, rubbish being left on the beach and pollution yeah. and because we are a tourist resort so to speak, we do get a lot of visitors in the summer and mm. our beaches do get ruined. But the locals are avid cleaners. They are avid cleaners. And do you think uh, whilst we're here, because I wonder if there's something actually quite beneficial to people's mental health. I personally think it's very rewarding, nourishing to do something good for other people, you know, picking up litter, whatever you would say, these cleanups and things. Do you think that would also contribute to people's feeling of you know fulfillment and, and and joy when they're out on the water Sarah do you think that's a part of it for them as well absolutely I mean just keeping your playground clean and tidy it does give you a great sense of achievement and you can look back and it's I did that you know I took all of this off you can see kids coming onto the beach and you know you've just cleaned it up for them Nice. What about you, Lynn? Do you, does your does your gang do a bit of cleaning up as well, or is it sort of? Uh... Yeah, no, we were doing it today actually. So we take a lot of groups. Um, for me, with with my own coaching, we take lots of groups of children and people with 
um, special needs. And we always have litter pickers with us. So we get the children to be picking the litter and the plastic up and then we'll talk about, we'll have a sort of a guessing game. How long do you think it will take this plastic bottle to degrade? Um, and then we, they get environment awards from us. So we give them an environment award for taking part in a litter clear up. So we do it quite regularly on the canal. And it's funny, since we've started doing it on the Leeds Liverpool Canal where we're coaching, we've seen the community in general doing it more. And our local council now gives out litter pickers and gives out purple bags. So if everybody puts them in the purple bags and just leaves them at the side, they will collect them. Ah, so we've yeah. seen a huge community. The people on the towpath are doing it more because they've seen us doing it on the water. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because again, I think there's another aspect I think that's interesting about paddle sports is when you are doing it in a place where there are public, it, you're really noticeable because you'll be yeah. only one of only a few people there. And if you're setting a bad example, then you know that's no good. But if you're doing something cool and doing it nicely and being happy and cheerful, it, people will really notice because you'll kind of stick out like you know, like a sore thumb in a way on a river. You're the only person on it or the only group of people on it. So I think that's also an interesting element to this because I think it gets perhaps gives people confidence to be kind of seen as well. And I think it's kind of an interesting thing in there. About you, Darren, I thought I'd ask you, does, does your group interested in does this activities, do you have like cleanup activities as well? Well, the main the main group only really grew through COVID, so we haven't really done much as a group. So yes. the plan the plan is this year is we're going to organise some down the local canal and sort out the local lake, lakes in the area. Um, but like I say, with the restrictions last year, we didn't really get to do much as a group. Yeah, as fair enough. Enough. when we when we go out personally, we we pick stuff up and we we bring it back. Um, me and my daughter, the, the, you know, before lockdown, we was on holiday, paddle boarded in turkey and we we're picking it up picking up all the litter out for the to stop the turtles from eating it and when the locals saw what we were doing they all started picking it up so again mm -hmm. as, soon, as soon as people see you doing it they want to get involved because all of a sudden they're like oh yeah shouldn't do that and they they it makes them aware of the environment around them mm, that's really interesting you mentioned turkey because i read something this week and it said actually great britain exports a lot of its plastic waste to turkey and it once it's out there we just it's kind of we're done with it and it ends up very often being either burnt or dumped illegally in turkey and that's kind of really it really shocked me actually well it didn't surprise me but it was shocking and now it sounds like you know, people are clearing that up when, when they're on holidays and stuff it's terrible when i paddled, I, I paddled over to uh, an uninhabited island um just off marmorous and when i got over there the whole shoreline was just full of plastic so filled up as much as I could in the bag I had, brought it all back, but there was loads left. And it, considering the island's uninhabited, um, you know, it, was, it was terrible. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of a kind of positive note because I think we're sort of drawing towards the end of our time. I'm just wondering, I might just go around and ask, is anything else any of you would like to say? Because, you know, we've got people here listening, watching live, listening again. Uh, Lynn, I wondered, is there anything that you'd like to say that you kind of wish you'd said and had, hadn't had the chance to say yet in this in this thing? Is that is that too broad a question? No, not really. Um, just to encourage people to think about it, to encourage clubs, committees, coaches, to maybe consider putting a, a well-being weekend for your local community on at your club. Encourage your local community to come and see what your club is like. Get in contact with local groups, local homeless projects, link workers, and maybe just run an open day to encourage people to come down and meet you. And it was it's going to introduce new members to you. It's going to introduce you to the community that you're paddling in. So you're making that initial bond and by having an open day, you're going to make it a lot more accessible and easier for people to come and have a long, come along and just walk through the door. Mm. No, that sounds cool. And that's the thing, isn't it? Like once people, once you get chatting to people, they realize, yeah. you know, the canoeing community is such a friendly bunch that I, I guess you just get more people involved. Sarah, what about you? Is there anything that we would like to talk about before we kind of wrap this up that we didn't get a chance? To, I mean, we could have talked for hours, I'm sure. Well, it's just one of those things, you know, if you're thinking about doing it, getting out on the water and do it, just talk to your local club, talk to your local group and get out there, get out on the water. It's, it will change your life. It really will. Mm. Yeah. Just get out there. Alison is saying we're all really friendly. I get, I think I agree. Yeah. And Darren, what about you? What do you, have you anything you'd like to finish up on? 
I'd just say the same as everybody else, really. You know, just just if you sat sat at home watching telly, seeing somebody doing paddleboarding, kayaking, or something, thinking, "Oh, fancy that." go and do it i mean mm. the world's a small place these days you can jump on facebook you can find clubs groups it's easy to make contact these days if you're a bit shy you can always make that initial contact via social media and it, it, it just opens it up it makes it so accessible now just just get out and do it yeah it'd be interesting to draw a little map and see how far anyone is away from a, a canoe stand-up paddle wall or kayaking club it'd be interesting. so here's just last one last comment for peter sarawi he says he says i've got to thank darren for providing me with paddleboarding lessons so i'm now confident and have the skills to go out on my own paddleboarding has certainly helped with my mental health and well-being so darren big up to you you've got a fan there you've helped it paid it forwards so yeah Thank you so much for that. So, yeah, I just want to say thank you to all of you for, for being here. I'm super grateful for all the people watching this evening. Uh, you know, it's just great to have you along. I hope we've brought a little bit of sunshine to your Thursday evening. We are going to be back next week with a very special 85th anniversary edition not us 85th anniversary, British Canoeing's 85th anniversary edition, chatting with a few legends of the sport and their paddling expeditions. So I just want to say thank you so much to Lynn, Sarah and Darren for being here tonight. Thanks to everyone for watching and stay safe. See you again next week and catch up with us on Facebook and YouTube if you want, but hopefully catch you next Thursday, 8pm. Good night, everybody. Take it easy. Have a good week. Bye.